Mr. Baltol, I'd like to start uh, my line of questioning. I think that we have already talked about the effect of HR1 on individuals, on businesses. I'd like to turn to how the, um, this bill will affect local communities and um, municipalities, if we can. Um, so many of us represent distressed communities, and oftentimes the code, the tax code, uh, allows certain credits that will encourage investments even in distressed and low-income areas. Um, as a former um, or recovering bond lawyer, I can attest to the fact that um, through tax-exempt bonds, we've built hospitals and schools and roads and bridges. Um, I think you know where I'm going. Um, but historically, low-income communities experience a lack of investment, as evidenced by the vacant commercial uh, properties, outdated manufacturing facilities, and inadequate access to education and health care services. The new, uh, the new market tax credit program aims to break this cycle of disinvestment by, uh, by attracting the private uh, investment necessary to, re, um, to reinvigorate uh, those local communities. Um, in HR 1, does the bill do anything uh, to, um, to this very popular program? And if so, what is the cost uh, or, or revenue savings that would be generated by eliminating it? Uh, the legislation before you repeals uh, future allocations of the new markets tax credit, but it was scheduled to expire um, uh, 2019. Yeah, uh, so let's see. On uh, page four of our uh, revenue table, uh, under the current expiration date, uh, repeal of the, uh, the termination of the new markets tax credit uh, would increase uh, receipts by $1.7 billion over the budget period. And um, would it also um, yield $37 billion worth of savings or something like that by eliminating it? Uh, I'm, uh, our table is only reporting the effect on uh, federal receipts. But my point is that um, the, new, new the new market tax credits and uh, historic tax credits and other uh, really important um, opportunities for local communities to be able to build um, public uh, and to fund public projects is critically important. I guess my, my other question to you is um, what would happen to popular programs such as the historic tax credit? What would, what would happen under this uh, H.R. 1? The legislation would also repeal the uh, uh, rehabilitation uh, tax, uh, tax credit. What about the empowerment zones? Uh, that would also be, uh, also be terminated. Um, you know, would it surprise Although, you, Mr. Bartol, that there are... All existing benefits under both the new market tax credit, any credits being claimed under the rehab credit, any empowerment zone uh, credits uh, are grandfathered. It's only the repeal... Well, it's all the... It's all new. Perspective. So, so, well, thank you for that uh, distinction. So all of the current benefits that one, one community has received by having these new market tax credits and, and, and historic tax credit would say the same, but future projects would be hindered by such, such, uh, such a bill. Um, it shouldn't surprise you, uh, Mr. Bartol, that in the state of Alabama, um, Children's Hospital Birmingham would not have been built if it had not been for advanced refunding of the bill, of, of, of the bonds. Um, they were able to finance it in 2009 when we were going through a really tough economic time. And advance refunding allowed them in 2015 to refinance those bonds at much lower interest rate, therefore um, saving um, children's hospitals a lot of money. Um, what would happen to advance refunding of, bill, of bonds under this bill? Uh, advance, uh, the ability to advance refund bonds uh, is repealed. Uh, bonds can always be currently refunded, but the advance refunding would be... So that uh, Children's Hospital in Birmingham would not have been able, if, if it were currently, this was currently the law, it would not be able to refinance uh, at a lower interest rate, therefore costing the hospital more. Is that correct, sir? It's, it's not completely precise, Ms. Sewell, because they could... Uh, they could but do you take into account derivative effects of, uh, of refunding and these bond exemptions, sir? 
I mean, it sounds to me like what your, that your table only looks at the cost of not doing the refunding or not having the new tax credit and not the derivative benefits of having tax-exempt bonds and all the public works, that, good public works that, that, they, that they do. Uh, when we uh, uh, t undertake the macroeconomic analysis that we're required to do, we try to take into account the uh, incentive effects that are built into the uh, uh, economics of the underlying. Are you saying that you do take into effect the re derivative benefits? The gentlelady's time has expired. I'm, I'm sorry. You, so in, just to note, Mr. Barker.